An important process in many animals is the ability to produce mineralized calcium structures, structures made of calcium carbonate or calcium phosphate. These are involved in the formation of bone, teeth, and shells. Imagine a space that is bounded by cells. To make bone, first they need to secrete proteins into an extracellular matrix and the proteins need to have some structure that if we zoomed in would happen to hold calcium and whatever will crystallize with it to allow a crystal to begin to form. The first step is production of these proteins that form the matrix around which the crystals will grow. Second, we need calcium pumps that will move calcium using an ATP and accumulate calcium. But of course, the calcium pumps will not continue to function if all we're doing is moving calcium in. We're making this area more and more positive. And so third, we need a transporter that will move we need a transporter that will move carbonate, in this case a bicarbonate transporter. And if this H plus is removed and moved back into other cells, we wind up with CO3 and we have accumulating amounts of CO3 minus 2 that allows us to start building up alternating calciums and carbonates, carbonates and calciums. forming ever bigger crystals. So over time, these crystals continue to grow. The crystals keep growing and they can completely fill a space as long as more calcium is moving in and more carbonate is becoming available. The final shape of the crystal depends upon the shape of the backbone that has positive and negative charges that are going to attract calcium and carbonate or calcium and phosphate. So if we zoomed in on a protein scaffold, the protein scaffold has negative and positive charges that attract phosphates and calciums to start the crystal forming. And over time, more and more calciums and in this case phosphates come in with here free calciums and free phosphates moving and having the chance to come in and for example attach as these calciums. The final result is a crystal with a protein backbone that started the whole crystal growing and the shape of the protein backbone and the rate at which calcium and phosphate or calcium and carbonate were provided to that growing crystal creates the shape of the final crystal. Biological organisms, animals, are capable of making crystals of amazingly complex shapes. Mineralized calcium structures of animals are often made with many small crystals with proteins between them. These are many small crystals with a protein matrix, in this case collagens, and so the crystals are being grown with interspersed collagens. Why make these composite crystal structures? The reason is that a single large crystal cracks very easily. If there's force applied, that force creates a crack that propagates and the greatest amount of energy is always right at the tip of the growing crack, meaning that that crack easily goes through and completely destroys a block. In contrast, if force is applied to crystals in a composite, the same force will break that first crystal, but the force then disperses it may break a second crystal, but again it disperses. And so the same force will fail to crack very many individual crystals in a composite structure because the force is being diffused outward through these flexible collagens. Animals wind up with the hardest shells or skeletons if they make large crystals with very little collagen between them, but they'll have the most crack-resistant 
shells or skeletons by making smaller crystals with much more collagen between them. The small ones dissipate force through the abundant collagen, but they're not as stiff and hard, whereas the large ones don't dissipate force as well, but they'll be stiffer and harder.